iPads have gotten better and better, and now they sometimes cost more than their laptop counterparts. I tried to switch from my MacBook to an iPad before. A lot has changed since then. So let's talk about how much things have really changed and if I'd consider switching back to just using an iPad. Let's get started. There are quite a few things that sets a laptop apart from a tablet. This would be the form factor, software, accessories, and user experience. We'll talk about each of those one by one because if I start talking about all of them at once, I'm gonna start rambling or get lost in my own thoughts or something. Okay, so let's start off with just form factor. This is the shape that the iPads come in. So iPads and tablets are just basically bigger phones. Someone just decided to stretch them out in Photoshop, and they're made to be easy to hold in your hands. Laptops, on the other hand, are made to be sat on the desk, or like the name implies, sometimes on your lap. An iPad isn't necessarily made to do all the different things that laptops are made to do, and you really have to purchase a bunch of different accessories to make your iPad more laptop-like. For me, I have an M1 2021 12.9 inch iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard. So this is really the closest to a laptop replacement you can get in terms of screen size. This is very similar to what Apple offers on their MacBooks. But really everything I talk about today really does apply to even the iPad Air and the 11 inch iPad Pro, since those are the ones with the chips that are very comparable to an actual Mac computer and have an ecosystem of products around them to support them being a laptop. If you wanna know about iPad sizes in general, I do have a great video on that topic right here. But the tablet shape brings some negatives too. Even with the keyboard accessory, it's not truly laptop-like. Yeah, it works perfectly fine on your desk, but it struggles when used on your lap or anywhere without a flat surface because all the weight is put in the back. So you end up in situations like this. If you use any third-party keyboards that don't prop the iPad up, then it makes it really hard to use on your lap to the point that you might as well not try at all. But the iPad form factor is so versatile because you can choose to use it just like a laptop with some accessories or treat it like what it always is, an iPad. Note-taking feels so much more natural. You can type things out super fast if needed, but still quickly switch to drawing diagrams or sketches. The App Store has a ton of great drawing apps and the Apple Pencil support is really fantastic. Reading books, documents and manga in bed or on the couch is amazing without doing that neck cleaning thing you do when looking down at your laptop. So is that worth the trade-off of not having it perfectly balanced in your lap all the time? I think so. Software is a big one that used to differentiate the MacBook from an iPad, but things are really different now. Macs with M chips can run iPhone and iPad apps by directly downloading them from the Mac App Store. And iPads have been getting more and more desktop quality applications. An iPad can connect to servers plug in external webcams, storage, and other accessories. There's even better multitasking capabilities now when you plug in the iPad into a monitor, letting you have different windows on the external monitor, almost as if you're using a computer. And you can do other cool stuff, like turn the iPad's screen into a display for a game console like the Nintendo Switch. That's pretty cool. It's come a really long way. If you hand me just an iPad, I can do all the common things that I would probably do on a Mac on just the iPad. You can use Google Drive and have access to all of your different Google documents, sheets and presentations. But the problem with the iPad currently is that once you become more of an advanced user in some of these applications, doing things can take a little longer, can be a bit more difficult to do, or just can't be done at all. Like, let's just pretend for a second that you're an absolute pro at using Microsoft Excel. You can run a bunch of formulas, but you can't run Excel macros on the iPad application. Let's pretend that you're a pro videographer. In Final Cut Pro for iPad, you can't edit directly off external storage. You have to move all your footage from external drives onto the iPad itself, which may be space constrained, taking up all the capacity in there to edit it. How similar an iPad app is to its Mac OS or Windows equivalent varies dramatically depending on application application. And you have to really understand what that app is capable of before you fully jump into just using an iPad. Again, I think for common everyday tasks, the iPad is great and it can do all the things a laptop can do, but the more advanced stuff that more professional users may be looking for, the iPad's just lacking. Sometimes we need better, louder, and fuller audio than our usual devices like the iPad can provide. And that's where today's sponsor, the Anchor Soundcore Motion 300 comes into play. The Motion 300 provides up to 13 hours of playback of high-res sound anytime and anywhere with its wireless high-res certification, premium feeling front metal grille, and detachable strap that makes it easy to carry around with you or hang it wherever you go. The Motion 300 has 30 watt stereo sound in a compact package that sounds great for its size.
has rubber feet on the back and the bottom so that the speaker can be used in different orientations and it's built to be solid and durable with an IPX7 waterproof rating. So you can even wash the speaker when it gets dirty. I find the Motion 300 to be a versatile speaker that I can just use in the home when I don't wanna rely on my phone, tablet, or laptop speakers. And especially in situations where I want fuller sound or when I'm outdoors relaxing on these cool fall nights. And if you want even more flexibility, the Soundcore app provides the Motion 300 with software updates and EQ settings. So if you're interested in the Motion 300, check out the link in the video description below. Anyway, back to the video. All right, let's talk about accessories now. When you buy a laptop, you get the complete package. You get everything you need for it to just be a laptop. But with an iPad, there's some added costs if you're trying to make it more laptop-like. So if you are using an iPad as a laptop replacement, you have to consider your keyboard and mouse options. You could just go with random Bluetooth keyboards and mouse. It doesn't make it much more laptop-like, more like a desktop with a tiny display. Apple, however, sells a magic keyboard attachment for their iPad Air and iPad Pro lineups that give you laptop-like levels of tilting and a 65% keyboard a trackpad, and a USB-C port that can only be used for charging. But that does free up your iPad's remaining USB Type-C port for any other accessories that you may have, or you can just use a dongle to add even more ports if you need them. This makes the iPads feel almost like a replacement for Apple's old 12-inch MacBook. Almost. There are third-party iPad keyboard cases, but those don't necessarily elevate the iPad up higher so that the screen is closer to what a laptop would be or provide another port that charges your iPad. In my opinion, the Magic Keyboard makes iPads feel the most laptop-like out of all the other offerings. I usually like to go third-party for accessories because it's normally much cheaper, but none of the alternatives really provide anywhere near the features of the Magic Keyboard. So for me, at least, I found the Magic Keyboard the best option. But beyond just making your laptop more iPad-like, there are a ton more unique accessories for a tablet versus a laptop as a whole. Like this Lab 22 iPad stand created by fellow YouTuber Sarah Dici Rhymes with Peachy, which is pretty pricey, but gives you full control over the overall position of your iPad. It's well built and it also feels really nice in the hand. This is nice to have if you wanna use your iPad with an external display for a desktop with a drawing tablet type smaller screen. You can do that, but angle the iPad to any position that you possibly want. It's just so much more physically versatile than what you can do with the MacBook. Okay, all these different capabilities are great, but how does the iPad handle actual day-to-day -day activities? Well, in everyday activities like general web browsing, watching YouTube videos, streaming content, and playing games, they work like how you'd expect from your iPad, but activities that required writing, I'm so much faster with the Magic Keyboard. Responding to messages, writing emails, writing this video's script, all significantly faster. Using it in my lap was not as nice as having a real laptop since all the weight is in the back. You have to do a balancing act to get the positioning just right on your lap. And if you're a big guy like me, it's a lot harder to do that with the smaller iPads because you have to close your legs a bit more, crushing your manly bits. But since all the components of the iPad are in the display, the bottom portion stays relatively cool and really only warms up with your own body heat or when it's plugged into a charger. And when you're tired of using it like a laptop, you can rip off the magic keyboard attachment and now it's an iPad again. What makes the iPad feel the most like a computer is when it's plugged into a monitor. You can do this by either getting an HDMI cable connected to a USB-C dongle or directly to a monitor that supports USB Type-C. Then on the external monitor, you can have up to four apps on the screen at once. Add any more to it and it just slaps it to the side into Stage Manager, which contains all of your different active apps. Having four different apps open on an iPad is completely different than having four windows open on a desktop. It's better on the iPad. With the iPad, when you resize applications, the apps adjust the layout between the iPhone and iPad versions, which makes information easier to read. On a Mac or PC, some websites do this like YouTube, but others don't adjust at all. Meaning all you did was make the window smaller, making it harder to read the content on the screen because now you have to scroll around or zoom in and out of the content that you're looking at. So the external display feature of the iPad is great. I can have YouTube up, my script, and two instances of Safari open so that I have everything I need on my screen at once for easy reference. Now here's the part that sucks though. When the external display works, it works great. When it doesn't, you get weird glitchy stuff happening all the time. So here are just some issues I've had in a 30 minute span. When clicking on the status icons on the external monitor, the quick toggle buttons show up on the iPad screen instead of the external display. You would think it would appear up on top where you actually pressed it. No, it shows up on the bottom. When screenshotting, it will take screenshots of both what's going on 
on the iPad screen and what's going on the external display. But when you try to record video, it only allows you to record the iPad screen, not the external display. Sometimes if the iPad doesn't like the apps you have on screen or whatever it's feeling in the moment or didn't realize how you resized it, it will just crash and wipe clean all the apps that you had open. I had a browser, YouTube and Genshin Impact up and it just hated that combination. And this doesn't apply to just apps like games. Sometimes resizing apps just stretches the entire app instead of filling in the screen. So you get scenarios like this and afterwards it just crashes. Or sometimes apps decide not to display correctly at all, even though they have displayed correctly in the past. And Stage Manager allows you to grab different windows you had open from other stages and drag them into your current one. But the icons for the app don't line up with the actual apps on the screen which might lead some users to confusion and slows them down in their workflow. Overall, the external display support works great sometimes, but other times it's super buggy, which sucks because this feature has been out on iPads for months now. So when it comes to being used as a sit down at your desk device for multitasking activities, it's just not there yet. And maybe this will get better with time, but it desperately needs the help here. All right, so at this point, it's conclusion time. Obviously, what I do with my iPad will be completely different than what most people use their iPads for. But the form factor and versatility of an iPad beats a traditional laptop in so many ways. But for me personally, I'm not sure if an iPad can replace a laptop yet. But when I talk to some people in my life who are non-techie, they use iPads or other tablets as their primary machine at home for basically all their computing needs. I talk to my own family and friends and they'd much prefer an iPad because the UI is just like their phones and easier to understand. And they don't even touch a computer unless they need it for a very specific use case or they outright don't even own a computer anymore and just ask around for those one or two times they need it in that year. It's like being the truck owner in your family. Relatives are always asking you to help move stuff. Otherwise, they use their phone or iPad. I don't blame them. An iPad, especially the iPad Air or iPad Pro, can cover up to 95% of a user's needs. Does it do all the things people want optimally? No, but it can get them done in a user familiar interface that people are comfortable with. And even after this experiment, I still usually just reach for my iPad before I even touch my MacBook because it's convenient, but I can't really do everything I need to do on it. If for you, the extent of your computer usage is basic computing stuff, web browsing, emails, documents, streaming content, and social media consumption, the iPad Air or iPad Pro will be all the computer you ever need. If you want to do more than that, even in 2023, five years after the what's a computer ad for the iPad Pro. It can't really replace your computer just yet, even if it does have a chip that's used in Apple's laptops and desktops. Anyway, what do you personally think? Have you replaced your computer with an iPad? How's that been going? Are you thinking of replacing your laptop with an iPad? What's holding you back? Let me know in the comment section below and well, I'll see you all next time. Bye.